An action potential, red dots, propagates along the axon of neuron 2, leading to an excitatory postsynaptic potential in the target cell. The depolarization spreads passively within the target cell until it reaches the axon hillock. Since the depolarization is lower than the excitation threshold, an action potential is not generated and resting potential is resumed. Successive activation of neuron 2 at short intervals brings to summation of the excitation in the target cell a process known as temporal summation. If at a given moment the depolarization at the axon hillock exceeds the excitation threshold, an action potential is generated. Action potentials arrive from neurons 1 and 2 at long intervals. The excitation induced by neuron 1 diminishes before the excitation induced by neuron 2 arrives. No action potential is generated. When both neurons simultaneously excite the target cell, the excitation builds up, a process known as spatial summation. If at a given moment the depolarization at the axon hillock exceeds the excitation threshold, an action potential is generated. An action potential propagates along the axon of neuron 3, leading to an inhibitory postsynaptic potential in the target cell. The negative charge, blue dots, spreads passively within the target cell, causing the cell to hyperpolarize. The membrane potential declines further from the excitation threshold. Action potentials simultaneously arrive from an excitatory neuron 1 and an inhibitory neuron 3. The excitatory potential merges with the inhibitory potential, so that the membrane potential remains unchanged. An action potential arrives from neuron 3 and causes the target cell to hyperpolarize. When the membrane potential begins to return to its resting potential, excitation is simultaneously triggered by neurons 1 and 2. The temporal and spatial summation of these potentials initiate an action potential at the axon hillock of the target cell. The terminal bouton of neuron 4 synapses on the terminal bouton of neuron 3. This type of synapse is termed axoexonic. The action potential arriving at terminal bouton 4 leads to an inhibitory postsynaptic potential in axon 3. An action potential moving down axon 3 reaches the hyperpolarized area and dissipates. This prevents the release of neurotransmitter from the terminal bouton of neuron 3 to the target cell.